Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lesson, you are going to talk about the alignment and working precisely inside Illustrator. To demonstrate this, I created these four boxes. I'm going to select all of them. When you select them, you will see this option. It's called align. Over here, we have align object, which is these ones. And also we have the distribution object or distribute object. So this one will align your object to one side of the selection. For example, we align all of these to the top. If you want to align them to the bottom, you will do it like this, and in the middle will be like this. If you want to make similar distance between them, we can use the distribution options. This one is horizontal distribution. Now the distance between the center of each of these boxes is the same. If you want to make the distance between each of the boxes from side to side the same, we can do that in another way. Let's select our boxes again. And then go to the alignment. Over here, just click on it and make it align to the key object. Now you will have this option activated. Here we can put the number of the pixels that we want. If we put it at 10, and then click on the horizontal distribute space. Now the space or the distance between each of these boxes is similar. Now if you want to increase the space between them, we can just select them like this, go to the alignment and make sure that you change this one to the align to the key object. And now increase the pixels. And just like this, we increase the space between these boxes. For the vertical orientation, it's similar to the horizontal. Just put them like this, select them, go to the alignment. You can align them to the center or to the one side. And you can also distribute them with this one, vertical distribute center. And now as you can see, the distance between the center is similar. If you want to change it uh, to align to the key object, now we can make the distance between the sides similar, just like this. There is another thing that I want to show you. Let me put these boxes like this and let's select all of them. Go to the alignment and now change this one to align to the artboard. When you have this option, when you're aligning it like this, these boxes will align or distribute evenly across the artboard. This is very useful when you want to create patterns or something, a background that uh, has a lot of boxes or anything that you want to be even in the artboard. To demonstrate better, I'm going to make a lot of copy of this green box. Let me remove this one and we are going to duplicate this. Press on the Alt and move it like this. Make as many copy as you want. Okay, let's remove these two and select all of these. Go to the alignment. Then make a line to the artboard and over here we can distribute them evenly and then go to the align and align them to the top. So just like this, we created or we distributed these boxes very nicely and evenly. Now let's move to the smart guides. I have created these three boxes. When you're moving them around, you will see this purple line. It shows the alignment. For example, these two books are aligned in the center. So the center of two boxes are aligned. You can also see that when they're aligned to the sides, and if you have uh, three boxes, for example, if I move this over here, it will even show the distance between them. So now it's telling me the distance is similar. Even if the sides are different, when you are moving them like this, it will tell you that the center of two are aligned. If I move them down like this, it will tell me the distance between them is similar. If you want to disable this feature, go to the view and then smart guide or command or control U to disable these smart guides. Now we no longer have them. Let's move to the snap to the pixels. Go to the view and if you come over here, you have snap to the point and snap to the pixel. Now let's explain the snap to the pixel. If I zoom in, 
When you are moving these things around, it moves pixel by pixel. It's not smooth. As you can see, it's laggy and it goes pixel by pixel. If you go to the view and disable the snap to the pixel, now you can remove your object very, very precisely and the way you want. Many times you would like the snap to the pixel to be disabled so you can move your objects the way you want. Now let's move to the rollers. If you go to the view, you'll see over here you have rollers. You can enable them by Ctrl and R or Command R. Disable and enable like this. And by clicking and dragging it down just like this, you can create guides. And then you can snap your objects to these guides. These guides are usually they are locked by default. You can unlock them by going to the view. Then go to the guides and unlock the guides. Just like this, you can move these guides around. And you can also delete them by pressing backspace or delete button. Just like this. We can also change the measurement of the roller by just right clicking on the roller. Let me move this over here now. Right click on the roller. You can change it to the point, to the inch, to the feet, to whatever measurement that you want. You also have the ability to change the starting of the roller. Just let me bring the transform control. Go to the window. And I don't know, I cannot find the transfer. Ah, okay, this is the transfer. Now I have selected my object. If I put the X and Y to zero, it will snap to this point because it's a zero point as starting of the roller. But we can change it just like this. If you click on this corner and move it around here, now the zero point is in the middle. Now if we put this zero, X and Y make it zero, it will go to this point because right now it's a zero point. You can change the ruler to be global or to be specific to one artboard. For example, if you have uh, more than one artboard, right now the ruler is for the global. Let me create another artboard. You already know how to create uh, more artboards. And I'm going to change the ruler. Now the ruler is global, the zero point is here. If you right click on the roller and change it to the artboard the roller, now each artboard has its own zero point, just like this. Sorry for the abrupt jump, but if you bring this over here, this box, let's select it and make it zero, X and Y, it will snap it to this one because the zero point for this artboard is over here. If we change it to the global and now make it zero, it will snap to this side because now the ruler is global and this ruler is working for all of the artboards. Now let's move to something else. You actually can turn your objects to the guidelines. For example, I want to make this box the longer one, this one, I want to make it guideline. You can do that by just clicking on it and then go to the view, then guides, then make guides, or you can also command or control five to make it guide. Now this box is working as a guide and we can snap our other objects to it. Now, if you go to the view and clear the guides, this box will be cleared as well because it's no longer an object, it's a guide. So go to the guides and clear the guides, now it's gone. Before we finish this video, the last thing that I want to show you is grids. If you go to the view and then show the grid, then to snap your object to the grid, go to the view and make sure that snap to the grid is enabled. Now when you are moving your object, they will be snapped to the grid. And with the grid, it's very easy to make similar shapes and also to make similar distance between the shapes. So just like this, we are making our objects to be similar and also the distance between them to be similar very easy with the grid. 
You can also change the settings of the grid by going to the preference. For the Mac, you can go to the Illustrator preference and then go to the guide and the grids. Over here, you can change the size of the grid. For now, it's 72. We can make it bigger, maybe make it 80. Press OK. Now the boxes are bigger. If you want to make it more precise, you can decrease the size of the grid. Go to the preference and then guide and grids. And now make it smaller. Let's make it uh, 40. Now it's smaller and the grid is more precise. You can hide the grid by going to the view and hide the grid. But still, your object will be snapped to the grid because you have that option enabled. If you don't want that, go to view and snap to the grid. Just disable it. Now you can move them freely just like this. And this will be the end of this lesson. Hope you enjoyed and learned something new. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.